Hello everyone and welcome to another Fontaine speculation video. Today, I'll be going over my thoughts about the previous Hydro Archon, as well as the Lockfolk. There isn't much known about the previous Hydro Archon, but I still have some ideas about her and her ideals. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. To start off, I'd like to talk about the Lockfolk. The Lockfolk are a race of hydro-elemental creatures that hail from Fontaine. They followed the previous Hydro Archon, and shared her ideals. The previous Archon sent them out around Tabat as spies, not for malicious intent, but rather to connect everyone like how water is connected. After the death of the previous Hydro Archon, most of the Lockfolk left Fontaine. This was because of the new Hydro Archon, Fosalor, the God of Justice. Fosalor's ideals differed from those of the previous Archon, and the Lockfolk did not agree with these ideals, which is why many of them left. The Lockfolk are now scattered around Tavat, and we've heard of and met quite a few of them. Of course, the most well-known of the Lockfolk is the Oceanid of Chingza, Rodea. Rodea resides just east of Chingza village in Liue, and according to Endora, is the greatest and strongest of the Lockfolk scouts. Speaking of Endora, she is also one of the Lockfolk. We met her during the Wishful Drops event, all the way back in version 1.4. This event gave us a lot of lore about the Lockfolk, a lot of which I already mentioned. Those who played during the event were also given a gadget that allows Endora to join you in the open world. Anyways, the next Lockfolk I want to mention is the Spring Fairy of Springvale. We have only heard of the Spring Fairy, and have never actually met her yet. She only talks to children, mainly due to the difference between human and Lockfolk lifespans. When Diona was young, she talked to the Spring Fairy, and she blessed Diona with the ability to make delicious drinks, no matter what ingredients she used. Anyways, the latest Lockfolk that we've met was all the way back in version 1.6, in the Legend of the Vagabond Sword events. This Lockfolk was known as Urania, or the Hateful Oceanid. Not much is known about this specific Oceanid, as she only appeared a handful of times as a boss in the event's domain. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the Lockfolk is their ability to manipulate the quality of water. Both Rodea and Urania have been described as making water bitter, while the Spring Fairy and Endora have been described as making it sweet. Rodea's bitter effect on the water was actually the main focus of the Wishful Drops event, as it threatened the wine industry of Mondstadt. This ability may originate from the previous Hydro Archon, and if that's the case, Fosalor may have this power as well. I'll get more into what this ability could reflect later on in the video though. For now, I'd like to discuss other pairs of new and old Archons, and the patterns that have been seen so far. Throughout our journey into Vat, we have been to two nations where the current Archon is not the same Archon who came out victorious during the Archon War 2000 years ago. Those would of course be Raiden A replacing Raiden Makoto and Inazuma, and Nahida replacing Rukadavada and Sumeru. In both of these cases, the new and old Archons shared a good amount of similarities. Starting with A and Makoto, they were twin sisters, with Makoto being the older one. They looked very similar, with the main differences being their fashion styles. They were also both gods of eternity. For Rukadavada and Nahida, they once again looked incredibly similar. They were both linked to Ermansul, and it was confirmed Nahida was born from the purest branch of the tree, so this similarity makes sense as well. Just like A and Makoto, both Rukadavada and Nahida were gods of wisdom. So far, 
Each new Archon has had some sort of relation with their predecessor. A was Makoto's sister, and Nihita was created by Rukadavada. Additionally, the main ideal has remained the same for each respective nation. If this pattern continues in Fontaine, that would mean the previous Hydro Archon would also have been the God of Justice. However, that may not be the case. Going back to the Lockfolk discussion, they left Fontaine because they disagreed with the ideals of the new Hydro Archon. So, the previous Archon may not have been a God of Justice, or if she was, her idea of justice would have been much different to Fossilor's. For now, let's say that the previous Hydro Archon had a different ideal. So what would that ideal be then? In my Fontaine Witch Trials video, I threw up the idea that the original Archon may have been a god of espionage. Like I said earlier, the Lockfolk were sent out around to that as spies for the original Archon. While we are told that her reasoning was just to connect everyone the way water is connected, there could be more to it. She could have sent the Lockfolk out in order to gather information about other nations, or perhaps even to monitor the other Archons for her own benefits. This could also still fit if she was a god of justice, as the information gathered from her spies would help her in her pursuit of justice. Perhaps she wanted a way to be able to solve any crime, with the Lockfolk being witnesses placed all around Tavat, just like how water flows everywhere and witnesses everything. Either way, I believe there may be something more to her sending up the Lockfolk around Tavat. She likely kept this a secret though, as it was Endor who told us that she had no plan, and just wanted everyone in Tavat to be connected the way water is connected as well. As for the Lockfolk's ability to make water either bitter or sweet, this could have been a way that the previous Archon enacted her justice. If a certain group of people in Tavat were being unjust, she could have made the water in their area bitter, and if they fixed their injustices, she would allow it to become sweet once again. This could also reflect on Fontaine in modern days. It has been said that Fontaine is currently polluted, this pollution may extend to the water being bitter in the nation, which could show that whatever is happening in Fontaine is seen as unjust. This injustice could be related to the Archon, the Fatui, or even the advancement of their technology. Speaking of the Archon though, after the previous Hydra Archon passed away, Fossilors took her place. Because of this, the Lockfolk left Fontaine and spread out across Tavad. Bringing back the idea that the previous Hydra Archon kept her true plans a secret, perhaps Fosalor knew of these plans, but she didn't keep them a secret after she became the Archon. Like I said earlier, each new Archon has had some sort of relationship with their predecessor so far. If this pattern continues into Fontaine, then it could make sense that Fosalors would know of the previous Archon's plans. However, she would instead choose to be more upfront about her goals, unlike the previous Archon who would have been more secretive. We know that Fosalor loves the atmosphere of her courtroom, so perhaps she is trying her best to stay in that atmosphere as much as she can. That would also tie back into my Witch Trial and Fatui theories, with the Fatui creating as many trials as possible in order to win the favor of the Hydro Archon. Now, I'd like to quickly touch on the topic of the death of the previous Hydro Archon. We know that Nahida is the youngest of the seven Archons, so it is likely that she died before the Cataclysm. It is possible that she did die during the Cataclysm, and Fosalor was born beforehand, similar to the situation with Makoto and A. I was initially hoping the Lockfolk would provide some answers here, but we aren't given a specific timeline for when they left Fontaine. Additionally, we know they live a lot longer than humans, but once again aren't given a specific time frame that could help. Anyways, as for how, there has been a theory going around recently that I think could be possible, and would be very interesting if it turns out to be true. 
This theory says that Fosilor killed the previous Hydra Archon, committing deicide. This would be such an interesting topic to cover, especially in the Nation of Justice, so I really hope something like it happens. Chill with Aster recently made a video on this theory, so I recommend you check out that video as well. I do want to give my own thoughts on this theory as well, but I want to wait for my video on Fosilor to cover that, which will be next in the series. Talking more about my thoughts here would give away some of my thoughts for that video, so I thought it would be best to just save it all for then. The more I talk about Fontaine, the more excited I get for its release. As of this video's release, if we go from 3.8 to 4.0, we are just over 4 months away from being able to visit Fontaine and finally getting some answers. There's still a lot I want to talk about though, so stay tuned. I'd love to hear what parts of Fontaine you're interested in, and what questions you have about it in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.